Okay, now I think the people are enough to start. And today, here I am in the double role here, sitting and speaking to you. First as a leader of the, or the mediator of this round table and as a speaker. I also remember a movie when one actor is playing two roles. But it's never at the same time when two roles are played by one actor. But here I am doing it today. So if I'm presenting the speaker as a mediator, I must say something good about those speakers. For example, I should list his, his or her titles what the community he or she belongs to. So I also should say about my own titles. I'm happy that I have uh, some recognition that allows me to sit here in front of you. But when people come to me, uh, they it doesn't matter for them absolutely if uh, I have some any recognition, any titles. What matters for them is what they get from me when they come to me. So I turn into a doctor who doesn't have a website even. People just come to me by hearsay. They come to me by rumors and they are changed to, and they leave me different. But I am a wicked doctor because people leave me with what they never came to me for. I don't know what, why you came for me, but I'm sure you will go from me with a different acquisition. Some years ago in St. Petersburg, it was a summit and the professor Lentley was speaking there, successor of Viktor Frankl. Of course, he was speaking about the meaning of life. And so the psychologist, when it's time to ask the question, he takes the microphone and he's and a psychologist is asking him, Professor, who has ever come to your session with an inquiry for, to get the purpose of life? No, I have never had a client asking for the purpose of life, even for me. Even for me, people don't come with this re request. But after a while, we come to a point when life, the meaning of life is the fundamental and the foundation on which and only on which we can build a structure, a building, a personality. For example, a manager comes and says, oh, it's so difficult for me to work. I'm sleeping there, I'm switching off there. I'm doing some simple errors. Please, do something so that I can work. So my inquiry is to work better at my current job. I say, hey man, does this job inspire you? Why did you come to me? Oh, yes. I forgot about inspiration. A girl comes and says, uh, my relationships are splitting, breaking down. I don't exist in these relations. As if uh, my boyfriend is always breaking me. I say, are you, are you there at all in life? Do you exist in life? In general, let me bring you back to you. Let me help you return to yourself in general. So the point of life, the sense of life, is the foundation on which something can be assembled around. Maybe someone will tell me what 
uh, life uh, sense is, uh, life meaning is, but I don't believe. I think everyone is uh, finding their own uh, meaning of life, and uh, it is the realization of a creativity, creativity potential. When we are speaking about creativity, we have an association of a process to create some product. We think that creativity is to create a product like intellectual application or material, a new cafe, a new collection of clothes. This is a product what you can point at with your finger. This is the product of your creativity. But indeed, creativity can be of two different uh, types. The second genre of the creativity is uh, invisible. It's cr creating psychological atmosphere, climate in the atmosphere. The person can work whoever, whatever he is or she is. But the, uh, but, uh, the the best is when the leader is creating this atmosphere or the person creates atmosphere inside him or her. This atmosphere, once created, inspires all the company, all the people around. So this is true creativity. And the third genre of creativity is a creativity, a creative process to create a person, including self-development. I'm all inspired. The person tells me, tells me, I am so inspired, but I don't do anything. I am not creative. I say, hey, you are creating yourself already. Look, you are so creative. You have your own truth there. This is a self-creation, self-development. So this creative flow I'm speaking about is the answer to the question of the meaning of life. When, uh, when we try to explain, uh, when we feel the meaning of life, we cannot actually describe it. The creative flow is a fact of life that gives the answer of to the question why you are living. This is the only answer to this main question. And see, the life meaning has two dimensions. One dimension is vertical. Frankl called it ontology of meaning. Ontology means movement to the beginning, to the origin. What do you like? Where is your foundation? And the second dimension is uh, also very critical is horizontal dimension. Something you're living for must be meaningful for some part of humanity. And in this horizontal axis, it is very important as well as the vertical. The higher is the surface, the higher is the cutting section of this axis. The higher you are, the more surface you cast light on. So when we're speaking about ontology, about the rest support of the creative flow of life sense, then we should receive in our heart or mind no matter. We should receive inspiration, inspiration as the truth parameter of uh, life meaning. When we say it, inspiration, inspire, in inhalation, in breath, as the breath that will fill our life and the life of the breather, and what everything is touching, he's doing in his life, he or she, he, their work, their life will be filled with this inspiration in breath. Then, inspiratio in Latin, 
And what is it? It's a Spiritus Sanctus entering your soul. When I speak about it in my programs or with my clients, I recall a fancy case interview with Eddington by uh, the, uh, in the interview, they ask each other, see how many composers are writing spiritual music, music devoted to God. You are the great composer. How many wonderful works have you written? Uh, but where is your music about God? Why are you not writing about God, the notes, the music? And he says, listen, each note of mine is divine. Each note of mine is devoted to God. So when I'm speaking about spirit entering you through the creative process, I say, this is the product before Marin said, created psychodrama, he created spontaneous theater, for example. And before, it was called confession. And confession where God, man was creating spontaneously. God, uh, man actually created God spontaneously through that spontaneous theater. If you are creating God inside yourself, God is... Uh, participating in you. You are one whole, you and the God. You are creating each other. And through this co-creation, when we are co-creating in this, when we are in this creative flow, the flow goes through your personality and life as a whole. But if we look at it, we can uh, distinguish between several layers and parts of it, and we can look at the ground. And when we look at the base of it, the foundation that gives us the creativity, we will see there the most crucial component. We'll see there energy and power. What is energy? The energy that is moving us somewhere. It's our person, it's our libido, it's our objective. Um, it's our appetite, it's our desire, this libido, this energy. If we didn't have any uh, if we didn't have desires, we would die probably. Saying God, we have desires. And we are doing, we're making love to, uh, not because we should create the biomass, but because we like it, we love it, we are inspired by it. So, if you are in this divine creative flow, it is transcending you in the format of God, appetite, desire, God. You want what you do. It inspires you. Of course, you must have the result by this. Of course, your message to the world must be received by the world. That food you are cooking is divine is spiritual, but this food must not be rotten, must not spoil, yeah, someone should eat it, yes, but when you are doing it, the state, the inspiration you are cooking with, you are re receiving power and desires and desires to overcome, to challenge, because in this desire you are united with God. The second component that we find in this creative flow, you know, what we are breathing, all the oxygen, nitrogen, what's the uh, ingredients of this uh, creative flow? When we create, 
if you ask a creative person, hey, look down to the source from which you, the flow goes. Is it yours? Is it really yours? I, I, did you really make it up? Well, on one hand it's mine, but on the other hand it's not mine, and on the third hand it's, it's common, it's everybody's. So, from what is flowing from there, there is one more important uh, part. Everything is important. This is love. When we are filled with it, we love what we do. We love those for whom we do it. We love each centimeter of our action in this flow. This is all our beloved thing. Of course, we love ourselves in the end. Everything is filled with love. And this is natural, because love is a natural drive. That's a natural uh, part, essential. And there is one more component there, is truth. Try to feel that spirit is an absolute truth. It's not a relative truth. The truth gives us feeling of the fact that I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. If a person is doing something, he can or she can do whatever his or her framework allows him. But I know, for example, healers who heal intuitively. And the, the doctor says, no, I should actually I should actually heal people by normal procedures, but I heal them, I cure them from my own gut, gutting, gutter feeling. I know doctors who are curing intuitively, and other colleagues come to them and say, hey, what are you doing? You are healing, curing by, not within the format. So this truth, gives us, allows us to know ourselves in the format of action, in the format of intu intuition. Try to see that intuition is our natural feature. <coughs> but we can cut ourselves from this talent, from intuition, by ratio. Ratio can digest a lot of information, including false inter information, but intuition never errs, never mistakes. One more thing, in the flow, within the ingredients of this spiritual air, inspiration, there is a component called wonder or transcendence, scientifically speaking. Let's remember Heidegger saying, transcendence is the main action in uh, human existence. Feel that wonder is happening every minute. A person who is living without wonder, it's not a life, it's, it's a miserable life. Hey. Uh, kisses are wonders, and if you're kissing without wonder, why are you kissing? If you work and you create, and there is no wonder in what you work and create, why are you working? When we look at the picture, we are haunted by the picture. It's just a canvas uh, and a paint, but it's such a miracle inside it. And creative flow can be called a process of creating the new. And uh, you can feel that the new, the novelty, is uh, in the end what is turning into wonder. Wonder wonders you, makes you wonderful. If we replicate something, it's just the same. And novelty is wonder. And so all this flow 
enters a person, fills them, and this will, must go into the world. It must be taken by the world too. This process must be demanded professionally, otherwise the flow will stop. If the river is stopped, uh, it will not circle, circulate. So that's the structure of the creative flow. I told you very nicely, and when I said it, I thought I would say this phrase too. I don't know how it's be translated into English, but in Russian, it's the Eastern wisdom is this. Um, however much you say uh, sweet, sweet, it will not become more sweet than the candy is already. So I think you found some resonance from my speech because uh, however much you can speak about truth, it will not become truer after it. I can tell you as many words and examples as possible, but nothing will appear from it. Nothing will appear from it. It's not creativity. What will I do with this? And here the main thing appears. The way we can walk, the path we can walk to the fact that this flow will be embodied in our life. And this path for embodying this inspiration is through our state. Let's feel that any, anything happening to us is our experience, is our piece of our I part, and this piece of I is very wonderfully sensed, it's like a piece of meat. We can feel it, like in the fifth element, uh, from one cell this girl appeared. This cell, this state, original state, I am. Every one of us, of people who come to me and to you, every human has this camerton and etalon cell. This is the case when the person can say, I am, I was sitting there on the mountain, or I was uh, doing something, well, some events were happening in their lives, and I remember, I recall myself, yes, I am there, I was there. From this genuine I am, we can build up any new I, new identity that's king, new identity that's playing, from this I am, we can create anything on top. And in this I am, there is everything I told you about. Uh, energy, love, true, truth, wonder. From this we can build ourselves. I will not... Uh, I have practices to feel I am. Of course, I will not give them right now, but... Any part of human identity can feel this I am. It's, it's not that you can feel I am. I actually don't know how to do it properly to feel I am. But look, besides this wonderful etalone sample states like I am, purity, we all have uh, what we call negative states negative, non-productive states. We are angry, we are afraid, or we are depressed, we are experiencing destruction of self-personality. And here the work starts to develop emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is a beautiful word, but it, it works. 
So if when someone opens their mouth and says, we must control our emotions, I say, hey, are you controlling the rain? Are you controlling the ground, the earth? Are you controlling the harvest? No, you are not controlling anything. You must live with this. And when you are able to live with this, to cope with the nature, the nature becomes your source. When you are able to cooperate with the rain, you get the harvest. When you can put the sail, the wind drives you in the direction you need. You will not control the wind, you will put your sail on it. So the same happens in the sphere of emotions. To have the emotional intellect means to be able to learn to live with the emotions that you have. Let's listen to this. Emotions are, give us, uh, are given us from the unconscious. How can you get into the unconscious? There is no switch to go there. We, we do not switch on our emotions. Our emotions switch on us. This unconsciousness is built in our, embedded in our psyche. Feel just like we feel our organs of the body originally without our involvement in the building of organs the same way emotions are built in us and the nature that builds us builds us correctly properly so the things happening in our life that we perceive we can may perceive them negatively as negative but we must understand very deeply that the disease, for example, is a signal, like pain says, we are doing something wrong. So the more negative experiences, emotions are s signals, and we must uh, decrypt them very well. And uh, conscious and subconscious and unconscious should be one whole. We must have our own understanding, our thought, to coincide with our desire, so, the, so that the superficial and the deep layers of our consciousness would work together well. Never be angry, never be afraid, never be sad. It's so wrong. The per thing is to learn to live with all this. Fear, indeed, fear gives us power, actually, sometimes a great power, strength. But we must learn how to grab, how to embrace, pick it up, this force. The anger is the signal that somebody intruded our territory. And this aggression or grieve or grudge, we should use it. We should experience it and then analyze what piece of our identity the intrusion was made for. Where were our borders, boundaries broken? So follow these natural signals. If we go to sea, if we actually experience grief, it means we lost something. And through grief, we can walk through and find our own identity. If you feel self-destruction, you should dissolve completely and somehow rebuild yourself from these pieces again. That's all true. If you believe these signals, you can use them, these messages, you will be successful in, in self-development. 
I look, for example, in St. Petersburg on the planet. Now it's time and the final time of my speech. Probably if you have any questions right away, you will have some minutes to ask me and I will have one minute only to answer. If you have no questions, then we can proceed our um, to know each other by you know, by this information. This is my website. I, that's my website and my email here, so you can go there, see what I'm doing, read my articles, read any letters. So that's the introduction we started now, can be continued gladly. I love uh, communicating with people and uh, hearing feedback and uh, seeing our creative flow all together. So any questions, please? Mm -hmm. No questions yet? One? I think that will be one and last question because of time. My question, if the state of emotions reached you at the meeting, at the job. So how, how can you work yourself through not to lose your reputation? Well, the thing is, for example, I have a, my doctor friend, he says, any uh, any ex extra surgery, any um, acute immediate surgery could have been planned surgery. So that's the entrance into the tunnel from which we can go out and for us to walk through this tunnel like this emotion. We must know this tunnel. For example, the fear and the self in confidence. We can learn how to take the power out of this emotion, but you should train it before. For example, those people who come on stage and play and act, a lot of sounds creating on stage, but believe that before this musician had been training a lot. So all ca this can be worked out and developed. Any state can happen to you. The nature will bring you emotions anywhere. But uh, from negative to positive emotions, the path should be trained, the path should be known, because the, the core I am is, is similar with different people. Like each uh, miserable family is miserable in the same way. From any negative state, we can train uh, the walk, the way out to the positive. We are learned to trans. We are learned, we must acquire, train, learn how to walk through these states. Okay, here is the end of my speech. in me being the speaker, and now I am the mediator again, and uh, I am introducing you my mentor and uh, teacher.